It is an honor to be here today. I stand before you inspired, empowered, and filled with gratitude as I share a story of how higher education turned pain into generational power. I am not here to talk about a story of sadness, but instead to reflect on how higher education and pursuing a university career can create a generational impact for our loved ones, our communities, and our entire nation. You might see this, and you might also feel this, but today I welcome you to the invisible, to what is not able to be portrayed. You see, higher education changed me. Higher education did not only give me a sense of hope, but it empowered me and inspired me to understand that I indeed, I am not a problem, but instead I am part of the solution. I welcome you into my life. Imagine what it might be to grow up as a street child in what has been considered one of the most dangerous cities of the world, San Pedro Sula, Honduras. Among creeks, entire rivers filled with trash in places where reality oftentimes don't meet its love and passion for life. You see, I remember as a little kid experiencing poverty from a very different level. I remember experiencing violence from a very different perspective. Education helped me understand healing. Education served to me as, as a method of therapy. I remember as a little kid, whenever there would be trash trucks, and they, they would come and dump the trash into, into the, this trash creeks and entire places where miles and miles of trash used to be. I remember as a little kid running to those piles of trash to whether look for toys, and sometimes even food. But poverty did not only affect me psychologically, but it also played a very key role in my development because I remember being five years old when poverty, when poverty took my brother. You see, I remember being five years old whenever I walked into a chanty where my mother used to live. In that place, we didn't have couches. In that place, we didn't have furniture. In that place, it was nothing but love and protection. But at the same time, when you live under absolute levels of poverty, life is very different. I remember being five when I walked into this chanty and my mother, she was desperately crying while also holding my younger brother who was two years old, Noecito. And I experienced how poverty took my little brother away from me. He died due to an asthma attack. Education, it's, it's, it's inspiration because whenever I meet students who tell me that they want to be doctors and nurses, I find hope in that because that means that they're going to save somebody's life. Education is power. Education can grab a child from the most difficult situation and turn them into empowerment. You see, higher education allow me to understand life from a different perspective. Every single day that I leave my house, I bring with me at least $2 to be reminded that if the day that my brother passed away, if I would have had those $2, I would have paid for a taxi. I would have been able to bribe my brother a breathalyzer. I would give up everything that I ever gained in this life. I would give up any type of property to be able to have my little brother with me next to me. Poverty scarred me. I wish sometimes I didn't fall into those black holes at night where I see my, la my brother's last, bre last breath, but I am inspired and empowered by education. I remember since a very young kid growing up in this very, very beautiful city. You see, San Pedro Sula, Honduras, is a very beautiful city. It's a very beautiful country where people, where people are amazing, where the food, oh my God, incredible, where, where the music, where the traditions, where, where the warmth, where the weather, it's amazing. But whenever you live under absolute levels of poverty, which are defined as making less than $2 a day, but yet a gallon of milk is $4.50, your life is very different. So as a very young age, I remember selling gums and selling candies at the streetlights. I remember as a little kid grabbing pieces of wood and a hammer and building myself a shoebox and going to the plazas and to the parks to be able to shine people's shoes. Because my mother taught me that there was integrity in work. Because my mother taught me that if you work hard, maybe you can be able to feed. My mom taught me that before you eat, you work to deserve that meal. And as a very young kid, I started working in the streets of Honduras to honor the concept of work. But under absolute levels of poverty, it doesn't pay 
of. My story is not one of sadness. I stand before you today as recently completed a PhD from Texas A&M University. Education is power. Education can grab a child and transform them. <laughs> and think about solutions for the world. I remember whenever I was 11 years old, you see at the age of seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, I would work in plazas, in stadiums, at streetlights. But in year 1998, Hurricane Mitch, a Category 5 hurricane, destroyed the country. It created devastation. More than 12,000 people's lives were taken away from this place. And imagine living among these absolute levels of poverty where you didn't get a text message or a notification or saw in the news what would happen. But instead, the water levels rose and rose and rose to the point that in the middle of the night, people had to skate. People had to find refuge. And as a young kid at the age of 11 years old, I experienced how the hurricane created extreme devastation. And that was the reason why people started migrating. That was one of the reasons why people started going to different countries and migrated to, to Europe, to, to the United States and other areas of Central America. And I remember being 11 years old. Whenever I had to have a conversation with my brave and courageous mother, who had to sacrifice the concept of unity for the concept of a better life. And my mother and I and my sister, we had a conversation about them migrating to the United States with the hope of one day reunifying. And my mother migrated with my younger sister to the United States as an immigrant to be able to provide an opportunity, not even to a better life, but to a life itself. And during this time, I stayed behind in Honduras for almost two years. I remember every single day, every single day grabbing glue and putting it inside of a bag and drugging myself because it was easier for me to drug myself and forget about my pain and my reality than to actually experience what had happened. I am only 11 years old and I already experienced the death of my brother. I already experienced not having a father at the house because of drugs and alcohol created a dysfunction of family. I already experienced how a hurricane now separated my family, but I'm not here to share a sad story. I am here to share about how education can create generational power. You see, after two years of living in Honduras, I remember one time we were playing soccer because soccer is everything that we have. Soccer is, is, is amazing. It's our passion. It's our love. And I recall, I recall playing like every single day people come out to play. But this time that we were playing, it was different because there was a drive-by shooting. Now that the drive-by shooting was different because I was, I was used to them. I was used to seeing them in schools, at the markets, outside of churches. I was already used to experiencing that level of violence given that Honduras has recently deemed as the most dangerous city of the world outside of war zone. I understand violence from a different perspective. And whenever I was only 13 years old, playing soccer, the drive-by shooting led me to do what I did every single time, which was drop to the floor, which was crawl, which was run. And whenever I started doing that, I realized that I wasn't fast enough. And both of my arms at the age of 13 have been impacted by bullets. I'm only 13. That's why whenever I'm in schools and I meet students who tell me that they want to go into the armed forces, they inspire me because they want to protect their communities. That's whenever I meet a student who tells me that they want to be a police officer, it inspires me because they want to be able to bring safety to their families. Education is empowering. At the age of 13, my mother heard of what had happened, and she helped me escape the country. And I remember as a young kid of 13 years old migrating to the United States as an unaccompanied minor. I remember walking the desert. I remember riding the train. I remember sleeping in mountains. You see, you see this. But you don't see this. Education serves a therapy. I'm only 32 years old, but I, my body, I already have 14 surgeries, including eight screws on this knee and entire nose reconstruction. Education healed me. Education allowed me to understand that there is hope in humanity, that there are solutions in our communities. And I migrated. And after 45 days of a very dangerous journey, I remember making it to the Rio Grande. And you see, I did not understand that I was breaking a human law. I did not understand what this level of complexity it was. Instead, what I thought, I thought that when I saw the river, in reality, who I was seeing was the reflection of my mother. I was seeing the concept of reunifying with my niña 
with my little sister. And I thought that if I swam across, that immediately as soon as I made it to the other side, I would be in the United States soil and that my mother and sister would magically appear from somewhere. But I remember swimming across. And when I made it to the other side, there was a small, there was sand and there were toys left behind and there was clothing left behind and there were, and there was, and there was clothing and all of those items from people that had come before us. And I don't know if this ever happened to you. But I remember crying so much that I put myself to sleep because my mother wasn't with me. Education is power. I remember going to sleep and then an immigration officer waking me up. A man in a full uniform gave me his hand, treating me with dignity and respect, and I was treated as a refugee as we should treat unaccompanied minors. And I was held. He, he, he rose me from the ground and he put me inside of a patrol car and took me to a detention center. I lived in a detention center for about two months, and all I knew about my mother was that she lived at another immigration shelter in a place where it was nothing but women because my mother couldn't really be able to afford that level of housing or an apartment on her own. Whenever my mother found out that I was at the detention center, a social worker was able to connect my mother and I, and I recall one day, Whenever an immigration officer, I was inside the detention center, told me, number seven, let's go. He told me to let's go outside of the detention center. He put me inside of a patrol car. And then he told me, we're going to go to another detention center. We drove for about 15 minutes. When we got to the other detention center, he opened the door of the patrol car. He told me to close my eyes. And he opened a door of that detention center. And whenever he told me to walk in, I did not care about the papers that I had within my hands. I did not care about the chairs or the people that were at that next location. All I saw that day is that in the horizon, there was a lady with a very beautiful red dress and a very beautiful red lipstick. And as soon as I saw her, I ran towards her and I hugged her. And it was my mother. I was with me, viejita. I was with the love of my life. I was finally reunified with my mother. And that was the most beautiful, electrifying moment that took all happiness and allowed me to be able to be free. But I did not know what life in the United States would be as an undocumented immigrant. I did not know how difficult it would be to learn a new language in an environment where it was challenging and difficult. Education changed me. Education empowered me and inspired me to be able to understand that I am not an example, that indeed I am a sample of the potential and capacity found in our communities. Education is power. And you see, I was, in, I was in the United States on a Monday and on a Tuesday. My mother had already enrolled me in school because for her, for her, she valued education. And I graduated from high school. And then I transferred to Lone Star Community College where I met mentors and advisors who helped me, who inspired me and allowed me to believe in myself. I met educators who told me that I, that I could become somebody. That despite of my past and my language, lack of language proficiency, that I could go somewhere. And I graduated from with an associate's degree. I transferred to Texas A&M University, my beloved university, and I graduated with a bachelor's in math and science, with a master's in English as a second language, and recently finished a PhD in urban education. But when I graduated, I didn't graduate alone. I graduated with my stepfather. A man who taught me how to be a man. A man who taught me how to value. A man who was able to understand me and meet me where I was at. The moment that I graduated from college, so did mi viejita. So did the love of my life because of the sacrifices that she made. Because of the tamales that she made on the weekends. Because of the children that she babysit. Because of the people that she took care of so that I could have an opportunity to go to college. Education empowered me and inspire me to believe once again in this world. And today, today I stand in front of you as the father of Amaris and the great equalizer gives that same kid who grew up among trash and who experienced violence and absolute levels of poverty an opportunity for that queen 
and that princess to grow up in a kingdom. I was not raised in a golden crib, but she gets to be raised in one. So I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be who I am today. I thank you for empowering me and inspiring me to believe that my past does not define my future. And I thank you because Dr. Celaya is here. And what Dr. Celaya seeks to experience is for students, families, and our entire communities to also experience generational power. Thank you.